Good morning. Today we're speaking to Dr. Laszlo Pasmich from the History Department. Welcome, Laszlo. We're happy to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me, uh, and I'm happy to talk about my research with you. I love talking about research. <laughs> Yeah. So, Laszlo, tell us, um, how did you become a researcher? Um, I never, I've always been interested in, in inquisitive uh, as a child, uh, asking questions, wanting to know more about things. Um, so, I think that part of my uh, personality uh, uh, helped me stumble into research. But I never had a dream of being a researcher or an academic. Uh, I don't think any of us do, actually, yeah. it just happens. But for some people, they have, I think, clear visions. Uh, a, a clear vision in mind of what they want to do. Uh, but for me, I sort of stumbled into academia and opportunities were presented to me. I grabbed them and I continued my academic journey. And along the way, I became more and more uh, interested and passionate about research. Oh, wonderful. So, Leslie, tell all of us, what research are you currently working on? So, um, my research generally focuses on transnational histories of decolonization in southern Africa. Uh, with decolonization, I mean the formal decolonization of research, uh, so not necessarily the modern conception of decolonization as a sort of break uh, of uh, Western colonialism, etc., on an intellectual level, uh, but more a decolonization of uh, political decolonization, so gaining independence. So yes. I'm interested in how the region as a whole uh, gained independence uh, and the struggles for independence and the transnational connections uh, that have to do with uh, this process of decolonization. So how the different countries and the people in those countries interact with each other and shape and influence this process of decolonization. So that's generally my research uh, interest and I'm working on several small projects as well as one big uh, research project. The smaller projects uh, are investigating the uh, trans uh, the relationship between liberation movements, uh, specifically Koremo, which was a Mozambican liberation movement that's often forgotten. So I'm interested in understanding how it operated in exile and how it forged relationships with uh, governments uh, or organizations such as the OAU or different liberation movements like the Pan-Africanist Congress of South Africa. Um, also writing short biographical pieces on two forgotten uh, members of the anti-apartheid struggle, Nana Mahomo and Manalisi Ndibongo. Um, okay. The reason why I'm doing that is because uh, their life does not neatly fit in uh, the general understanding of the liberation struggle and the conception of the anti-apartheid struggle. And I think their focusing and zooming in onto their lives is quite valuable. And then my big research project will look at how uh, decolonization resulted in white flight in southern Africa from 1960 to 1994. So again, looking at different countries in the region, uh, from Congo to Angola, Mozambique, uh, Zimbabwe and Namibia, ending in South Africa, and looking at uh, how, at the time of decolonization, uh, there was a white flight from these countries to apartheid South Africa, and the reason why I'm interested in that is because I am uh, curious to find out more about uh, apartheid's uh, uh, policies as a state in relation to the region, but also how white societies interacted with each other and why, how white identity uh, during this period uh, sh was shaped and how it evolved over time. And then I think like any other individual, I also have many projects which I'm collecting information on or thinking about, uh, but I haven't actually started okay. with. Um, so uh, one of them is better understanding how uh, Namibia, uh, con uh, Namibian voters or white Namibian voters uh, contributed to the 1961 referendum uh, to make South Africa a republic. Okay. So history might be about the past, but it also makes the past come alive and that's what keeps it so fascinating. Because obviously the deeper you dig, the more fascinating information you find out. So tell me, have you managed to identify any research gaps in your area? So, <clears throat> um, there, in South Africa there is obviously a lot of history that still needs to be written or, or reconceptualized or rewritten. Uh -huh. So there's plenty out there for people to study still and uh, to think about more deeply and more carefully. 
Uh, for me, uh, what I'm particularly interested in is better understanding the histories of liberation movements that have been forgotten or that did not become governments uh, after gaining independence. So the so-called losers of the independence struggle. So Coremo, the FNLA, uh, SWANU, uh, these are all good examples of liberation movements or the PAC who did not gain uh, sort of a seat at the table once yes. uh, uh, independence had been achieved uh, and better understanding uh, what these organizations stood for, the challenges that they experienced in exile, and then um, what we can learn from that about the liberation struggle in general, but also about visions of uh, post-colonial futures. Okay. And then um, another project that I'm quite interested in, and I think is high time that somebody writes about, uh, is a general historical survey of black historians in South Africa. So we have a very good uh, collection of research that focuses on how uh, history as a discipline uh, developed over time. Yes. Uh, but generally, uh, that research focuses on uh, white Marxist liberal uh, or Afrikaner nationalist historians, uh, and very little has actually been written uh, about black historians. Okay. Uh, and to see is there a, a distinct school, a black history school, that developed uh, over time, or do we slot black historians in these existing historical okay. traditions? Oh, yes. So, Lazlo, what would you like other aspiring researchers out there to know? How can you encourage them? Uh, so, I think for historians, first and foremost, and you will probably like this, is don't over-rely on the internet. For right? sure. For history for sure. research. The library uh, or archives or special collections uh, hold a ton of information uh, that people have not used uh, and that is very valuable and that has not been digitized. If you over rely on the internet, uh, you have sort of a limited understanding of what is out there in yes. terms of knowledge or information about the past. So the internet is a wonderful resource. More and more material is being digitized over time, but don't over rely on it and also hone your skills of how to use libraries, how to use archives, how to use uh, physical repositories yeah, of also information. Also good for historical research is oral history. Yeah. Because that's rich and it's full yeah. with a lot of information. So uh, with oral history, um, for young people who are advancing through their career, think about your own identity, who you are, uh, what is unique about it, what skills do you have if you speak a particular vernacular language, how can you use that in your research in the future? So uh, if you are a Susuku speaking student or researcher, can you perhaps use that to do oral history research in communities in the free state uh, or make use of that to analyze uh, early newspapers in Susuku? Okay. Uh, um, so, or if you come from a particular place that's of interest to you, uh, like, and you have a good insight about, uh, about, you know, the place you grew up with. What questions do you have about this place? So think about what sets you apart from other people and capitalize on that. Okay. Um, then other things that I can remember is, uh, be bold and adventurous. I think a lot of, uh, researchers in South Africa, um, focus on South Africa as a research site. Uh, but it's nice to also think about what is happening outside yeah, of South Africa. Yeah, your horizons. Yeah. And perhaps become an expert in another country outside of South Africa or a region or something like that. South Africa has a long history of being quite inward looking uh, uh -huh. and thinking of South Africa as an exceptional place. But broadening our horizons can actually be valuable. And if you start early, you can see that there is a lot of interesting things happening in other places. And why can't we have experts in South Africa that are focusing on Europe or the US or the rest of the African continent. So um, then more general, uh, I would say be kind to each other as researchers, uh, be helpful, help people with their careers, share knowledge and information yeah, and data. Uh, we're all in it together. Uh, we're all on a similar journey and sometimes it can be difficult. So if you are courteous to each other and kind, you can have wonderful working relationships and uh, also often develop good personal relationships. So I think be collegial and kind to, to each other is, is quite important. And then finally, I think take care of yourself mentally and physically. Um, 
there's a lot of stress uh, yeah. on us. Uh, there's a lot of pressures to produce outputs, and often we neglect ourselves, uh, our well-being, our physical and mental well-being. So don't do that. Uh, the job is not as important as you uh, and your mental well-being. So okay. I think these are some general. That's very valuable. Very valuable. Yeah. So, you mentioned that you might go camping, so it sort of relates to the next question. What do you do for rest and relaxation, because even the brain needs to take on yeah, that. No, I think, uh, relating to what I said about mental and uh, physical yes. well-being, I think uh, you know, taking a step back from work and, 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 and just focusing on yourself and interests that you have is important. So, what I like to do is cook. I really enjoy cooking uh, and uh, thinking about food, eating food. What's your favorite dish? My favorite dish, it's a difficult one, but I would probably have to say pizza because it's quite versatile and the types of flavors you can incorporate uh, on a pizza is, is, is diverse, so, so there's always something new you can have. And then I like to be in uh, nature, outdoors. So I like to travel by car with my 4x4, go camping, uh, yeah, uh, explore South Africa, I think... Um, you know, there's a lot of small places in South Africa that, you know, if you just stick to the highways or make use of a plane to fly from city to city that you forget about. But it's yes. actually nice and good to get a good understanding of what uh, South Africa looks like, where people are living, what they are doing. So, and even beyond South Africa, going to places like Namibia or Botswana or Lesotho or Swaziland. So, and while I do that, I enjoy camping. Again, this idea of being a bit more basic in, in nature. And then finally, fly fishing as a, okay. as a sport. I think that's also quite uh, enjoyable. Unfortunately, I can't do much of that over time. But uh, yeah, these are some of the things that uh, keep me busy uh, while I'm not working. Okay, that's good to know. So, Dr. Pesmius, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. And we hope you enjoy your upcoming holiday. Thank you very and much. And we're wishing you the best going forward with research and personally. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, goodbye.